Shannon and Kim are experienced teachers at Skyview Middle School. This is my 16th year teaching. This is my 20th year. Who both like to incubate new ideas in their classrooms. They experiment in hopes of getting that reaction all teachers hope for. These kids aren't quiet, so I usually know that they get it when they yell out, I get it! <laughs> oh, I dance around the room, we celebrate it, I'm, I'm very loud and excited. The minute that a child can explain to me why this is working, then that means I've done my job. We celebrate the mistakes, and then we certainly celebrate when the, yes, we finally got it. I wish it happened all the time. <laughs> it's a great feeling. It's why I stay in teaching, to have that moment where kids have that aha moment, and they're excited about it. Aha moments mean comprehension. And comprehension is hard to get to when the fundamentals need so much attention. Think about all the practice that goes into your sports. You do it all the time for a full season. You are practicing every day. For a skill in math, we do it for a couple days, and then we move on to another skill. Kids don't have that practice time, so it's not staying. We can't get to the solution if they can't get to the start. <laughs> Kim and Shannon are going to learn about interleaving. We'll see how the strategy of interleaving can make practice time lead directly to those aha moments. Interleaving is basically just mixing things up. So mixing up different types of problems or mixing up different concepts that you're trying to learn. A lot of assignments use what's called blocking, where the same types of problems are grouped together, especially when students are first learning the concepts. In math, for example, there might be 10 addition problems, then 10 subtraction problems, then 10 multiplication problems. Whereas interleaving is going to have all those different types of problems all mixed up on the page. What interleaving does is forces the students to figure out not just how, but also when. Not just how, but when can be the difference between a kid getting a passing grade and a kid getting that aha feeling. This is my little high horse I'm gonna get on here. Anybody can be taught dividing a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. However, kids don't understand what that means. They don't know why they do it. They don't understand the meaning behind it. We typically learn the rules, right? If they're the same sign, you add them. If they're different signs, you subtract them. But now give the multiplication rules. They confuse the rules. So building that conceptual knowledge allows them to own the rules. They don't have to memorize them. They can always derive them. Finding strategies to develop that conceptual understanding is tricky. Interleaving is a way for students to find that conceptual understanding for themselves. Interleaving means students will still practice the fundamentals, but at the same time, they'll develop the type of comprehension they'll need in the real world. Life comes at you interleaved. So if you're a doctor, you're not going to say, okay, today we're going to see all of the patients who need this particular drug to solve their problem. That's not how it works, right? People are coming in, there's all different types of problems and you have to keep switching between and recognizing not just how to solve a specific set of symptoms, but also figure out when to do what. Based on our discussion, it sounds like they could be doing more interleaving. It was interesting, Shannon sort of indicated she, she didn't know before today what interleaving was. She was using interleaving and starting to integrate interleaving into her classroom, but then was even saying on the tests, I don't necessarily interleave. On the homework, I don't necessarily interleave. Why not jumble it all up on homework assignments and tests and sort of integrating more? Once interleaving gets students to recognize the right skill, they're on their way to understanding why they use that skill. Plus, with the constant reviewing of previous material, there won't be a need to cram when exams come at the end of the semester. There might be some struggle early on, but over time the students will probably get more used to it, and then those successes will be really exciting. There were early struggles, for sure. How you actually meaningfully incorporate this into your classroom is actually quite different than the research paper looks like. Basically, any textbook page you want to take, worksheets you want to print from the internet, all need to be modified in order to achieve interleaving. Thinking about having to really redesign a lot of my resources left me feeling overwhelmed. Kim persevered and interleaved her students' homework. Then she wanted to figure out how to interleave in the classroom, but how to do this without eating up more precious class time. Then I started thinking about if, if I really just want students to temporarily shift their focus from one topic to another, the question doesn't have to be, 
a really challenging, rigorous question. It just needs to simply be on a different topic. Kim's solution? She included fewer questions overall on assignments and limited the difficulty of the interleaved questions. She was mindful of when she wanted to challenge her students with the questions themselves and when the challenge was in switching between types of problems. Are we interleaving and it's leading to the students not being able to solve very many of the problems at all? Maybe that's too much interleaving. Maybe they're not ready for it yet and we need to sort of focus on the individual types of problems first and then mix them up. Or are we maybe not interleaving as much as we could be and the students are performing really highly and maybe we could make it a little bit more difficult, introduce a few more mistakes and challenge them a little bit earlier to produce more durable, flexible learning in the long run. And so just trying to play with it, doing a bit more in their classrooms and in their homework assignments and, and seeing how it goes. You know, we can do research on the strategies that work, but it's the teacher who's actually going in and doing it have to play with it a little bit based on the situation and the context. Mm -hmm. I personally use stations as a way to do independent practice in my classroom, and interleaving fits perfectly in stations. So with the chunk worksheet exactly as I expected, the student was finding the radius and the diameter and using that formula to calculate circumference. And as soon as it switched to being given the diameter instead of the radius, they were calculating it using the radius. With the interleaved worksheet, I was asking students to transition between diameter and radius. I also was asking them to use different values of pi. Being given circumference, work backwards and find diameter. And students were far more attentive to the given criteria and what they were being asked to find. I can see students stopping and thinking and they're not with their calculator just typing numbers in. I can see them pausing their brain had to shift from this topic back to some old material and then back to the new topic. Is this the kind you make a table? Is this the kind you need a formula? You could see that it was doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Shannon had similar observations of her students when they took a six-question practice standardized test. And she started seeing results. It was a mixture, so their brain had to read through the material just like on an MCAS day and just like in life. I have a kid who has struggled, did not meet expectations for math at all on his last year MCAS. He got all six out of six correct on his own, no help from anybody at home. No one got below three out of six. And in every single class, I had half the class at six out of six. That's amazing. Hey, <laughs> there is something to this. The challenges of interleaving were real and immediate, but Kim and Shannon found the effort worthwhile. Interleaving did help with getting more practice. Because the interleaving was there and I didn't have to focus so much on reviewing past concepts, then I could practice on the skill at hand. I always thought I was pretty good about it, but I, this year it was really eye-opening to say, I don't think I was good enough. It definitely has impacted my thinking of the math. When you're trying to create an assignment or an activity that has interleaving in it, you're far more thoughtful about what questions you're using and why you're using those particular questions which in and of itself provides a richer learning experience for the students. This year, I was able to have conversations, say, okay, what do we do when there's no decimal there? Where is the decimal? Why do we add a zero? What does that mean? Interleaving can help students get to the aha moment for those kids that are ready to grasp the math concept. Yes! I'm good! I'm so good! <laughs>